To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Right, my dear children. So, within this chapter, we'll be mainly focusing about the essay type questions, right? So, in the earlier chapter, my dear children, we discussed about several MCQ type questions related to the eighth lesson, movements and the movements and the uh, movements related to the organisms. Okay, right. So, the second type of question here. You are given with several questions. Now you need to write down the correct answer. So the first question which is given, write the special appendages used by the given organism for locomotion. The special appendages used by the organism for the locomotion. Amoeba. Very simple my dear children. When you take the amoeba, we know that amoeba use Pseudophodia for the locomotion. Pseudophodia means false legs, right? Or false feet. So, amoeba is a unicellular organism. So, this unicellular organism has the ability to create feet like structures when they are needed to, or when they need to locomote from one place to another. Okay? So, those structures are called as pseudophodia. Euglena. Euglena is the second animal which is given here, the second type of microorganism. Euglena is going to use flagella, right? Flagella. Flagella. So, flagella is the special appendage used by the euglena. Okay. Euglena is going to use the special appendage which is referred as the flagella. Next one, paramecium. Paramecium is going to use cilia. Cilia. Hair like structures or hair like organelles that can be observed within the cell body. Cilia. Dolphin. Very simple. Dolphin is going to use flippers. Flippers. Dolphin is going to use flippers, my dear children. Flippers. Then the earthworm. Earthworm is going to use muscles. Within brackets, I'll include no special, no special, right, appendages. Right, no special appendages. You know that earthworm uh, animals like earthworm, snail, leech, cobra, python, those kinds of animals they do not have a special appendages for the locomotion. They use only the muscle movements in order to move from one place to another. So earthworm mainly use muscles, and they do not have a special appendages. So amoeba use pseudophodia for the locomotion. Euglena is going to use flagella. Paramecium is using cilia. Dolphin utilize flippers. Earthworm use muscles. I mean muscles in the sense here. They do not have a special appendages which are separately being located for the locomotion process, okay? So, just by moving the muscles contained within the body, they will travel here and there. They're going to travel here and there. So, these are the appendages used by organisms given in here. Right then, the next question. 
give an example leech for the given movements. So you have to provide an example for the movements given here. Positive geotropism. Positive geotropism means towards the ground. Positive means towards. Geo means ground. So towards the ground, what kind of a movement is going to occur? Now you have to write down a movement that's going to occur towards the ground. So trophic movement which occurs towards the ground is the growth of roots. So we can write the answer. Growth of roots towards the ground. So growth of roots towards the ground is a positive geotrophism. Positive geotrophism. Next one. Positive hydrotrophism. Hydro means water, my dear children. Hydrotrophism means growing or else moving towards or away from a water source. If it is regarding positive, then always to the direction of or else towards the water source. Towards the water source. So, Positive hydrotropism means, very simple, this motion is going to occur, right? This motion is going to occur towards the water source. So, roots are the ones which are going to grow towards the water source. So, once again, we can write growth of roots. growth of roots towards towards a water source then the next one positive thigmotrophism positive thigmotrophism so Coiling of tendrils in passion fruit. Coiling of tendrils in passion fruit towards a support. Coiling of tendrils in passion fruit towards a support is a positive thigmotrophic movement. Thigmotrophism means coiling of that, uh, coiling of that tendrils, okay, towards a support. So positive thigmotrophism. So these are the movements and these are the examples for the movements given in the question number two, my dear children, okay. The positive trophic movements about the positive trophic movements then the next one so give an example each for the given movements here this time you are given with negative trophic movements negative trophic movements so negative geotrophism negative means away from the source or away from the mentioned one geotrophism let's see let's ignore about the trophism thing so it's given as geo. Geo means the ground. So negative geo means negative geo means. Right? Negative geo means, my dear children, opposite to the direction of ground. Opposite to the direction of ground. Opposite to the direction of ground, always the stem is growing. That means always 
the stem of the plant is growing away from the ground. So we can write the answer drawing or else growth, right? Growth of plant stem growth of plant stem towards or away from the ground. Right, so growth of plant stem, growth of plant stem away from the ground, growth of plant stem away from the ground is a negative geotrophism. Next one, negative phototrophism. You know that roots are always growing towards the ground, that means away from the light. So we can take that movement as a negative phototrophism. Growth. of roots growth of roots away from light towards ground negative phototrophism. So growth of roots away from light towards ground can be taken as a negative phototrophism. So these are the examples for negative trophic movements my dear children. Negative trophic movements. Right. Give an example each for given movements. So here you are given with Nastic movements, nastic movements. Number one, nictinastic movement. So in nictinastic movements, my dear children, when dark is going to fall, you know that sleeping movement can be observed, right? So these things going to occur within Sisbania, Mimosa and Tamarind kind of plants, okay? So we can write the answer, showing Showing sleeping movement showing sleeping movement by mimosa mimosa plant mimosa plant when dark falls so when dark falls mimosa plant is going to show sleeping movement so it can be taken as a nictinastic movement it is a nictinastic movement then the next one haptonastic movement so hap in haptonastic movements my dear children when the stimulus is touch, the sleeping movement can be observed. Once again, the mimosa plant is going to exhibit the haptonastic movement upon touches. So when you touch a mimosa plant, it is going to exhibit the sleeping movement. So this is referred as the haptonastic movement. So we can write the answer showing Showing sleeping movement Then here in the above also we have to mention leaves Showing sleeping movement by mimosa plant leaves, right? Mimosa plant leaves when dark falls or 
right that's better so always you have to write down the better answer because we know that sleeping movements is going to show by leaves but however mentioning the leaves is good rather than writing down the incomplete answers always try to write down complete answers so mentioning leaves is good okay i mean it's it completes our answer so showing sleeping movement by mimosa plant leaves when dark falls that's a very good complete answer for the nictinastic movement once again for the haptonastic movement showing sleeping movement by by leaves of mimosa leaves of mimosa plant when touched when touched so showing sleeping movement by leaves of mimosa plant when touched this is an example for haptonastic movement haptonastic movement then the third one photonastic movement photonastic movement so photonastic movement means my dear children this is going to occur mainly because of light photo means light no so upon receiving light you know that in the morning flowers are going to bloom so blooming of flowers during sunlight or during sunrise as it is going to occur within the morning most of the times right we can uh, provide as an example for the photonastic movement okay so blooming blooming of flowers so blooming of flowers during sunrise this is a photonastic movement my dear children so once again nictinastic movement showing sleeping movement by mimosa plant leaves when dark falls nictinastic movement haptonastic movement showing sleeping movement by leaves of mimosa plant when touched when touching mimosa plant leaves going to show haptonastic movement they're going to go they're going to show the sleeping movement okay this is referred as the haptonastic movement number three photonastic movement blooming of flowers during sunrise this is a photonastic movement so these are the examples for nastic movements my dear children then the next one explain in situ conservation in brief very simple my dear children conservation or protection of a certain organism within its own habitat is referred as the in situ conservation okay so we can write the answer conservation conservation of right conservation of organism within its own habitat yeah you need to mention conservation of an organism right conservation of an organism within its own habitat within its own habitat is in situ conservation
so conservation of an organism within its own habitat is in situ conservation in situ conservation means my dear children conservation of a particular animal or else an organism within its own habitat within its own habitat name three plants that can be saved by in situ conservation very simple abnoi satin wood white eggs these are several indigenous plants or native plants native plants are the ones which can be protected by using the in situ conservation right next one why locomotion is important for an organism provide two examples so we discuss this thing when we are discussing about the previous mcq questions i told you that locomotion is very important for an animal or else for an organism in order to protect from predators or in order to protect from hunters right predators in order to protect from predators locomotion is very important then the next one need to get next one is to get nutrition to find food then to find new habitats locomotion is very important for an organism so that's why animals are showing much more adaptations rather than the plants for the biosphere who, which we are living in okay so animals are well adapted now to the biosphere because they have or they can be as they can locomote so it will help in finding out these things so in uh, you know like when we take these above factors these factors can be easily fulfilled by the locomotion process so the animals are now well adapted rather than the plants to our biosphere mainly because of the locomotion so we can write the answers so you have to provide two examples number 1 helps to helps to find food it helps to find food right then the next one number 2 helps to find new habitats helps to find new habitats so first one is it helps to find food right then it helps to find new habitats both of these things are regarding especially for animals right especially for animals for animals these things are very important my dear children because you know that animals are depending on food items produced by the plants or produ produced by the autotrophic organisms so therefore animals need to find food in finding food locomotion is important then the second one is it helps to find new habitats so if a certain habitat is getting destroyed because of any kind of an influence like natural disasters so in that case they have to find out new habitats so to find out new habitats this locomotion is very important this locomotion is very important so especially for animals locomotion is very much important right for these factors for these factors write an importance of in situ conservation very simple my dear children we can protect
we can protect native plants native plants right we can protect native plants native plants means a plant that is going to grow on a certain environment not all the environment but on a certain environment these things are also referred as indigenous plants indigenous plants okay right then then the next question write two chemical substances that is useful to create a woody stem in a plant two chemical substances that is useful to create a woody stem in plants so to create a woody stem in plants the chemical substances which are essential are cellulose and lignin so number 1 cellulose number 2 lignin cellulose and lignin then the next question my dear children during a sunny day a balsam plant is withered and the stem is bent down explain the reason so during a sunny day you know that the transpiration is going to increase so more water is going to evaporate from the plant so therefore the balsam plant will not be able to keep the stem erect or rigid because of losing water okay so you can write the answer like this during a sunny day during a sunny day more amount of water or more water is getting evaporated by the plant by the plant therefore therefore balsam plant stem or some plant stem will bend down this is the reason my dear children right so during a sunny day more water is getting operated by the plant therefore will some plant stem will bend down so this is the reason okay right then let's head on to see the next question so within the next type of question my dear children you have to fill the blanks which is given in each of these questions right so let's head on to observe the questions number one blank is a plant that shows sleeping movement very simple my dear children we know that mimosa mimosa is a plant that shows sleeping movement next one blank is an indigenous plant you can write abnon abnon so abni is an indigenous plant abni next one chlamydomonas shows blank movement chlamydomonas shows tactic movement right tactic Chlamydomonas can show tactic movements, my dear children. Next one. Roots growing towards the ground. Roots growing towards the ground. Towards the ground is a positive. Roots growing towards. If it is towards, then it is positive. 
drowned then it is geo positive geo trophic movement so it is a positive geotrophic movement positive geotrophic movements roots grow in towards the ground next one in blank movement response of the direction does not depend on the direction of stimulus if the direction of the stimulus is does not going to depend on the direction of the response or vice versa then my dear children this is a nastic movement so in nastic movements right in nastic movements response of the direction does not depend on the direction of the stimulus so in nastic movements Respond, response of the direction does not depend on the direction of the stimulus. Next one. In blank movement, reaction is not related. Reaction is not related with growth substances. Once again, my dear children, nastic movements. Right? Once again, the nastic movements. Because in nastic movement, reaction is not related with growth substances. Okay, reaction is not related to growth substances. Next one. Showing sleeping movement during a shock is a seismonastic movement. Right, seismonastic movement. Seismonastic movement. Sle showing sleep in movement during a shock is a shock. Shock means a vibration. So during a shock, the sh uh, sleeping movement shown by a plant is called as a seismonastic movement. Seismonastic movement. Next one. Euglena has blank for locomotion. Simple, my dear children. Flagella. Euglena has flagella for locomotion. Euglena has flagella for locomotion. So these are the answers for the question number three. Now let's head on to observe the fourth question. Put tick or cross for the given statements. So you have to put a tick or else a cross in here. Question number one. Giving response to a stimulus is movement. Giving response to a stimulus is movement. Not at all. Giving response to a particular, particular stimulus is not a movement. It is what do you mean by the irritability. So we'll be discussing those things in great ten. Ability of giving out a response to a particular stimulus is called the irritability. So this is incorrect, my dear children. Movement means motion of a body, motion of a body part or the whole body. So it is incorrect. This is not what do you mean by, right? The movement. Giving a response to a stimulus is not a movement, right? Next one. Ebony is a native plant. Correct. Ebony is a native plant. Is it, it is correct. Next one. Human use appendages for movements. Once again, correct, right? Humans use appendages for movements. We use appendages, legs and arms for our movements. Next one. Amoeba uses pseudopodia, right? Pseudopodia for locomotion. Once again, correct. Amoeba is going to use, or oh, amoeba is going to utilize pseudophodia for locomotion. It is correct, no problem. Paramecium uses flagella for locomotion. Ah, that's incorrect. Paramecium is going to use cilia, not flagella, right? Flagella is utilized by chlamydomonas. 
and a euglena. In the earlier question, we discussed that thing, right? So it is incorrect. Paramecium uses flagella for locomotion. It is incorrect. Paramecium is going to use cilia. Next one. Muscle cell has the ability to contract and relax. Correct. Muscle cell can contract or relax. It is correct. Next one. Lignin keep non-woody plants erect. Non-woody plants. Lignin keep non-woody plants erect. Absolutely incorrect. Because non-woody plants are kept erect. Right? Non-woody plants are kept erect by water. Right? Water is going to deposit within the stem of the non-woody plant and water helps these non-woody plants to keep erect. Okay? For woody plants, lignin and cellulose are important. Right? For woody plants to keep erect, lignin and cellulose are important. Next one. Blooming of flowers is a nastic movement. Correct, no problem. Blooming of flowers is a nastic movement. Stem growing towards the light is a positive phototrophism. Stem growing towards the light, towards the light, positive, correct. So light means photo, once again correct. So stem growing towards the light is a positive phototrophism, it is correct, no problem. Pulvinus helps in showing sleeping movement by plants. Once again, correct. No problem. Fulvinus helps to show the sleeping movements. Right? It is correct. Then the next one. Showing sleeping movement during a touch is a tropism. Showing sleeping movement during a touch is a tropism. Now, tropism means a trophic movement. So, Showing sleeping movement is not a trophic movement. It's a nastic movement. So this is showing sleeping movement during a touch is incorrect regarding a tropism. Right? It's not a tropism. It's a nastic movement. It's a nastic movement. In-situ conservation used to protect Institute of Conservation used to protect indigenous plants. Correct, no problem. It is correct. So these are the answers for the question number four, my dear children. Okay. Giving response to a stimulus is movement. Incorrect. Abney is a native plant. Correct. Human use appendages for movements. Correct. Amoeba uses pseudophodia for locomotion. Correct. Paramecium uses flagella for locomotion, incorrect. A muscle cell has the ability to contract and relax, correct. Lignin keep non-woody plants erect, incorrect. Blooming of flowers is a nastic movement, correct. Stem growing towards the light is a positive phototrophism, correct. Pulvinus helps in showing sleeping movement by plants, correct. Showing sleeping movement during a touch is a trophism. Incorrect. In situ conservation used to protect indigenous plants. Correct. Right. So these are the falsehood of the true, uh, falsehood and the true but of the statements given in uh, statements given in this fourth question, my dear children. Then let's head on to see the next question. So the next question. So here you have to label the parts. Okay, here you have to label the parts, my dear children. Okay, right. Then we'll name the parts, my dear children. Here, A, A is the humerus. B, B is the tricep muscle. triceps muscle. C, C is the tendons. D, D is ulna. E, 
the radius bone. Radius bone. F. This is the biceps muscle connected to the radius bone. Biceps muscle connected to radius bone. Then finally G, that's the biceps muscle. So once again, my dear children, A, A is the humerus bone. B is the triceps muscle. C is the tendons. D, the ulna, E, the radius bone, F, bicep muscle connected to radius bone, G, the bicep muscle. Okay, so commonly you can refer these two as the biceps muscle, no problem. Right, then we'll head on to observe the next question. So complete the table, here you have to write down the appendages used by each of the animal given in here. So animal given bacteria, normally bacteria utilize cilia or flagella for the locomotion, okay. Bacteria is a type of microorganism that use flagella or cilia for locomotion. So we can write the answer flagella. or else cilia, flagella or else cilia. Next one, chlamydomonas. So chlamydomonas is using flagella, my dear children. Usually chlamydomonas is like this. These are the two flagella, flagella used by the microorganism chlamydomonas. So chlamydomonas is going to use Flagella, right? Flagella. Flagella. Bat, bat is going to use wings, right? So front, front limbs of the bat is adapted as wings, okay? These things are adapted as wings so that they can fly. Next one, lion, limbs, limbs, tuna fish, fin, tuna fish, as it is a fish, it's going to utilize its fin for the locomotion, right, for the swimming process. Leech, cobra, snail, all of these organisms, they, they are going to use muscles. So therefore, no special, right? No special appendages. They do not have special appendages, right? So we can refer muscles or we can write it as muscles, right? Muscles can be written for all of these organisms for the appendages that they use for the movements. And also within the brackets, we can mention they do not have special appendages, right? Okay. Next one. Complete the diagram regarding nastic movements. So we can divide nastic movements into several parts like this. So we'll write down the nastic movements, my dear children. What are the nastic movements? Number one, right? Nick T. 
nastic movement nectinastic movement then the next one nectinastic movement then my dear children we can observe the second nastic movement photo nastic movement then haptonastic movement haptonastic movement then So, nectinastic movement, photonastic movement, haptonastic movement, sesmonastic movement. Haptonastic movement occurs because of a vibration or else a, uh, or else not, not because, haptonastic movement occurs because of a touch. If you are going to touch, then we can observe the haptonastic movement, my dear children. Photonastic movement, the blooming of flowers, right? Photonastic movement, blooming of flowers. Haptonastic movement is going to occur because of a touch, the sleeping movement because of a touch. Sesmonastic movement, sleeping movement because of a vibration, right? Sleeping movement because of a vibration, because of a vibration. Right, so once again, my dear children, these are the four types of nastic movements. Actually, there is there's only four, right? There's only four types of nastic movements. What are those nastic movements? Nectinastic movement. This is the nastic movement that occurs or the sleeping movement that occurs when dark is going to fall. Then photonastic movement when receiving light, especially during the sunrise, the blooming of flowers. Haptonastic movement when touched what will happen a sleeping movement will occur then seismonastic movement during vibrations or shocks what will happen sleeping movement can be observed so these are the four main types of nastic movements nastic movements then the next one complete the diagram regarding the traffic movements and now you have to write down the traffic movements so Trophic movements, there can be two types as positive and negative. However, we'll write down the main types of trophic movements here. So the main types of trophic movements. Geotrophic. Geotrophic movement. geotrophic movement phototrophic movement phototrophic movement thigmotrophic movement Thigmotrophic movement. Then K 
chemotrophic movement then hydrotrophic movement the main types of trophic movements phototrophic movement to the direction or away from the direction of light geotrophic movement to the direction of ground or away from the direction of ground hydrotrophic movement towards the direction of a water source or away from a water away from a uh, from the direction of water source chemotrophic movement towards a chemical substance or else away from a chemical substance thigmotrophic movement towards a support away from a support okay coiling of tendrils towards a support right so these are the trophic movements that we can observe trophic movements right then next one identify the given movements in figures so you have to identify the given movements first one stem tendril so this tendril is coiling to a support this is my dear children a thigmotrophic movement thigmotrophic movement so this is specially a positive thigmotrophic movement right positive thigmotrophic movement positive thigmotrophic movement right coiling of tendrils towards a support next one here you can observe the mimosa plant and especially you can see that by using our hand we are going to touch the mimosa leaves so the sleeping movement can be observed so this is my dear children haptonastic movement haptonastic movement haptonastic movement haptonastic movement this is very simple as you can see towards the light the stem is growing or the apex is growing this is positive positive phototrophic movement positive phototrophic movement next one here blooming of flowers this is photonastic movement as you can see here there is sunlight and the flowers are blooming so this is a photonastic movement photonastic movement in the final one you can observe that the plant root plant root is there the plant root is growing towards the soil or the ground so this is positive geotrophic positive geotrophic movements right positive geotrophic movement so coiling of tendrils towards the support positive thigmotrophic movement when touched mimosa plant is exhibiting sleeping movement haptonastic movement haptonastic movement stem is growing towards the light positive phototrophic movement 
root of the plant grow in towards the ground positive geotropic movement upon sunrise flowers are blooming photonastic movement photonastic movement okay so let's head on to see the next question my dear children complete the table given by providing an example negative geotropism negative geotropism negative means away so growing stem away from the ground growing stem of a plant away from the ground so this is a negative geotrophism negative means away geo means ground so growing stem of a plant away from the ground stem of the plant is growing away from the ground is a negative geotrophism it is a negative geotrophism next one positive hydrophism hydro means water positive means to the direction so roots of the plant roots of the plant always grow in towards the water it is a type of a positive hydrotrophism roots of the plant growing growing towards a water source right next one positive thigmotrophism positive thigmotrophism very simple coiling of tendrils in passion fruit coiling of tendrils in passion fruit towards a support towards a support right so coiling of tendrils in passion fruit towards a support is a positive thigmotrophism positive thigmotrophism so the final one my dear children positive chemotrophism so positive chemotrophism it is the growth of growth of pollen growth of pollen right growth of pollen along along the along the tube along the tube towards towards ovule right towards ovule so growth of pollen along the tube towards ovule right here the here the chemicals in ovules and pollen interact each other okay right then the next one so here you have to mention an example for the nastic movements nictinastic movement very simple my dear children sleeping movement in leaves sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant when dark falls
nictinastic movement, right? Sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant when dark falls is a nictinastic movement. Next one, haptonastic movement. It's because of the touchers, right? So haptonastic sleeping movement sleeping movement in leaves sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant when touched when touched so sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant when touched is an example for haptonastic movement next one seismonastic movement once again the sleeping movement right so sleeping movement in leaves of leaves of mimosa leaves of mimosa plant during vibrations so sleeping movement in leaves of mimosa plant during vibrations an example for seismonastic movement then finally photonastic movement blooming of flowers blooming of flowers photonastic movement right my dear children now with that question we have come to the end of our extra questions session okay so we have discussed several questions related to the lesson part of support and movement in organisms so now we have discussed several questions we discuss all the theories even we discuss the questions related to the textbook as well right so now i hope that you got a good knowledge a sound knowledge about the support and movement of the organisms lesson okay so till we meet again with a new lesson it's time to say goodbye i'll be hoping to meet you guys with our next lesson to watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.